What's up, divas and divos? It's your girl, April. So you guys already know what time it is. It's Wednesday. It's Real Talk Wednesday. So I thought I would get into the season, you know, into the holidays. And this year, I went ahead and purchased a little tree for my room just to kind of like give you guys a little taste of Christmas while watching my videos. But of course, I definitely had to go ahead and use or get like a white tree just to match my room decor with a little bit of pink and a splash, a splash of blue in there. So please excuse my voice I'm like a little bit raspy um I'm really thinking that um I was thinking and I was getting over the cold that my girl Mumsy gave me but um no not really so much okay so uh, please excuse the raspiness and it just feels like my ears are popping okay just from this whole entire cold I think this has been going on for like Probably like two weeks. Um, what's so crazy is because it was super hot out here, like for like up until like a week and a half ago, it was really hot out here. And um, like hot, like unbelievable hot. It's like, okay, it's the end of November. It's Thanksgiving and it's like 80 something degrees outside. And I still have my air conditioning on. So last night I had to turn the heat on because it was like really kind of like chilly in here and like normally i don't turn the heat on because you know i'm not from here i'm from new york so it doesn't really get too cold to me but it was really cold and it's really cold today there's no sun which would probably be like the perfect time to do like a wig tutorial because i don't have to get messed up with the clouds and stuff but like yeah it's like really really um like chilly um and my voice is very very raspy so i think it has a lot to do with the changing of the weather a lot and just in general um and then also i probably got the cold back again because my daughter nay is sick as well so god knows when i'm gonna get better because seriously like yeah but <clears throat> I am cool other than that I am just fine so I will be doing a video on my weight loss update because I was asked to do a tutorial or not a tutorial because how do you do a tutorial on a weight loss um, I mean I, you probably could like you do like some workouts and stuff but I don't really do any vigorous workouts because that's just not in me like I just don't really like to um so I do like get up at six o'clock in the morning every morning except for Saturday so Sunday through Friday I go for a walk for an hour and it's probably about two miles it's not even an hour excuse me it's probably like 45 minutes and it's about two miles one point yeah it's two miles two miles exactly uh probably like uh i wouldn't say a yard short of two miles so we just gonna run that shit off to two miles um but i do that every day and i take my dogs with me um well not dogs um not plural meaning sugar and luna but just sugar by herself because Luna is just a little puppy still and I'm trying to get to where I got to go not walk forever so I just take sugar with me she's on a weight loss journey too she just don't know it yet she's kind of really she's gotten really fat she's been with me for a year in July so she's been here for a while and um you know she is a rescue dog I did get her from the shelter and she's huge now like She's really chunky, like really, really um, a chubby dog. And I'm not really sure how, because my Coco, he was not like that. But maybe because she was, um, you know, I don't know if it's for girl dogs spaded or neutered, whatever, but she was that, you know, she can't have babies. But Coco was never, but I, I'm not really sure why she's big like that. Like she doesn't, we don't feed her table food. We don't feed her scraps. She's greedy. She begs, but we don't give it to her. I just... I don't understand why. So I take her with me because she's on a weight loss journey too. She just doesn't know it. Um, and we just walk. So we walk every day for almost an hour. Um, and I do like 50 squats a day in the morning with this big, huge medicine bowl that I purchased from the 99 cents only store. I did show that in a video, like um, I think it was last month's video. So I do squats on that every morning. Uh, well, not every morning, um, but probably like, I want to say like four days out of the week. I do 50 squats on that and I'm trying to work my way up because, you know, when you lose weight, you lose stuff and I'm not really trying to lose my booty. So if they had some squats for your tits, I would be doing that too. Uh, but they do have exercise, but thank you, Jesus. They still there. Okay. Yes. Um, <clears throat> But other than that, um, I will be doing a weight loss update um, for you guys um, to let you guys know what I have been doing and how much weight I have lost because I was 217, so I am now, as of this morning, 196. So 
a bitch is losing some weight. And other than that, I'm just like super cool. You know, I'm really ready for the holidays. Um, I'm not trying to really let too many people irritate me, though there are some that have been really irritating me. And you know what I have to realize? Like, seriously, I have to let, I have to stop letting people get to me sometimes. Like, it's not even that they get to me because they don't like, I don't really take what they say to heart, but it just irritates me. And then there's sometimes there's days when I'll just delete a comment. And then there's days when I'm like, you know what, bitch, I don't have shit to do. And y'all know this. And I will fucking come for you. And like, I just don't like disrespect. I just really don't like disrespectful people. And then for one, I don't like disrespectful people. And then when you say something back to them, they catch an attitude. And the first thing that they say, and this is again, once again, yesterday, because I have posted up this video on this ash blonde wig um, that I have received. And, um, you know, I did the video. It is what it is. Um, I wasn't really too crazy about the length of the hair, but I did like the color and I did want it to have dark roots, but it didn't, but you know, it is what it is. Um, so I did make the best of it. You know, there's always gotta be one bad apple out of the bunch to say some dumb shit. Like the girl had the nerve to say, you look, uh, um, you look ugly in that, or that looks ugly on you. Whatever she said, she was like, you either, you look, that looks ugly on you. That was her exact words. And so, you know, one of my subscribers, she had to say something to her because like, that's disrespectful. And then she going back and forth with her. So then I had to jump in it and you know, she going back and forth with me. And it's like, why the fuck? I don't, I'm not really understanding why these young people fail to realize, bitch, you're going to get my age too. So why do these young people, this has like been going on for like the past few months, constantly keep calling me old. Like, bitch, you 40, you old, you old, you old, you old, you old, you're grandmother, you old. Or, and it's like, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking to you. Why are you even talking back to me? You old, you, you half my age. Like, so just because I'm double your age or half your age, bitch, I don't have a right to say anything back to you. Bitch, I'll smack the shit out of you if I see you in the street. Who the fuck is you talking to like that? I'll treat you like you one of my motherfucking kids. Fuck out of here. So, you know, it's, it's that, that shit, that's the shit that's really pissing me the fuck off. Like, and so I had to say this girl, um, excuse me, but I'm not old. 40 is not old. She was like, then she responded back. You must have bumped your head. 40 is old. You old. Okay. Don't nobody want your old ass. She said, then she tried to say my skin was dry. Okay. My skin was dry and that I wear cake face makeup. I don't wear cake face makeup makeup because you can see my freckles. If you can't see my freckles, then it's cake face. So it's like, and it's not even cake face if you can't see my freckles because I'm sitting in front of a camera, but I don't wear cake face makeup because if, as long as I can see my freckles, that's not cake face. I don't wear cake face makeup, but you know, she was like, your skin is dry. Your skin is, um, your skin is, I got bad skin. I got dry skin. Um, I need to fix my teeth. Like, bitch, first of all, for one, I don't have dry skin. Okay. So I don't even know where you get that from on a camera. My skin is far from dry. I'm constantly telling you guys that my skin is oily. Um, second of all, my skin, baby, I don't even have no makeup on today. The only thing that I have on my face is my fucking eyebrows and um, my eyeliner and some you know, concealer on my eyes, but my face, I don't have no foundation on my face. So where do I have bad skin and dry skin? Like I'm saying, girl, bye. And, uh, what else was it? She was like, that's why your teeth are, um, you, you, you old cause you got old teeth. Um, you smoke and all this. First of all, I don't smoke. I haven't smoked cigarettes in like years. Okay. I quit smoking cigarettes like a long time ago before I even moved here. Second of all, I don't even smoke weed. I haven't smoked weed in like three months, three or four months now, but she was trying to say that's my teeth was like that because of my smoking. No, my teeth are not like that because of my smoking. Okay. My teeth got like this because I have teeth removed. Okay. So that's why my teeth are spread. Second of all, she was just like, Oh my voice is, um, deep. I've never known my voice to be deep because I smoke, you know what I'm saying? Like really though? Like, and then she just kept saying like, you know, you old, you old, you have my age. So I was like, Oh, so I wonder what you going to fucking look like when you get my age. Then you going to wish you look like my age when you get my age, bitch, please. Then she's like, well, you old, like, so 40 is old. Like this, that's the part that bothers me. Like the part that don't really bother me is the part that you said something about my teeth. Bitch, say whatever the fuck you want to say about my teeth. I've been new. My teeth was fucked up. That's why I go to the dentist and I get them fixed. So you're not really saying nothing new. 
Like, I, I don't know. I think people feel like that shit hurt me. I mean, like, it used to bother me, but, like, you know what? I, I'm I'm so over that shit. It's like, so you telling me something that I've been new already. Like, girl, please. Girl, bye. Get, try something else, like I had to tell her. Try another one. Skin dry. Never that, bitch. I Like, I had to tell her, you wish you could rub up against my fucking nice, fucking moist skin. And then, like, a bunch of other shit. But the part that really ir irritates me is that these young people that is 20 years old, because she said she was 20, or 21, or 23, or 25, feel like 40 is old. And like they feel like they can just disrespect people and just say whatever the fuck they want to say. And then when somebody says something to them, they catch an attitude. They catch a major fucking attitude, or they try to spew out you old. You shouldn't be saying nothing like, bitch, like I said, I smacked the shit out of you. Who the fuck you think you're talking to like that? But it just irritates me like the young generation now, you know what I mean? They have no respect for nobody, like for real. They don't do shit. They feel like they could just sit on their ass all day and not do nothing and think it's okay. You know what I'm saying? They feel like they can run their mouth all the time and think that it's oh fucking K. They feel like they gonna stay 20 forever. And then when they get our age, like my age, they gonna feel like they not old. Like, okay, so first of all, old is not an age. It's how you fucking portray yourself. So as long as I feel young, bitch, I'm gonna always be young. But I just am so confused about this young generation now because I just really feel like they don't have it together. A lot of them don't have it together. And they just feel like the world revolves around them. But then you have to stop and think like, hold the fuck up. If it weren't for me and people before me and people before them and people before them, bitch, you wouldn't have shit, okay? Go sit the fuck down. You think that you invented cell phones, bitch? Do you think you invented motherfucking MP3 players, iPhones and computers and, and tablets and all that shit? No, the fuck you didn't, okay? Go sit the fuck down somewhere. It was somebody before you and, bitch, it was somebody before me, okay? And if it wasn't for us and us older people, there wouldn't be a whole lot of other shit. But they constantly always spewing out, you old, you old, you old. It's like they never have any respect for the older people or the elderly or whatever the fuck you want to call older people than 20. They don't have any respect and they feel like they're going to stay 20 forever. Like, listen, let me tell you something. Half of them don't even, not even half of them, but a third of them don't even get to make it to my age, okay? Because they're constantly doing shit because they feel like they're invincible or they are unstoppable, okay? Or they end up in jail, you know what I'm saying? So they don't even get to be in their 40s because they're constantly running their fucking mouth or doing some dumb shit, okay? And then we got all of these different drugs out there that, that has been invented before I was even born or, excuse me, after I've been born like over the past years these all these new drugs that kids have taken and think that it's okay you know what i'm saying so they a lot of them don't even get to be to the age of 30 and it is sad that these these young people feel like oh it's okay to run your mouth or it's okay to disrespect or it's okay to not do shit with your life like i'm constantly saying shit to my own kids because y'all ain't about to be around me and be no motherfucking buns or, you know what I'm saying, I'm constantly saying something to other people. But then when you say shit to them young people, they just roll their eyes and they feel like, you know, they know so much. And that's the shit, excuse me, because my mouth is getting dry. That's the shit that irritates me. Like, they feel like they know everything. And I just, sometimes I just can't take that shit. Like, so it's not like I'm letting, like, these little internet thugs or cyber thugs, cyber bullies, get to me because I could care less if you say anything about my teeth. You could call me fat. You could say, um, oh, what? I wear fake hair. I wear fake lashes. I wear makeup. You could say all of that because, bitch, I'm not the only one. So you're not really alienating me. You're not really pointing a finger at me. You you naming, you saying me and a whole lot of other people that watch my videos or that making videos. But the funny thing is about it is you can sit up there and call me old and judge me and talk shit, but then you know everything the fuck about me. You spewing out all the shit you know about me. So, like, I had to say, oh, that's so cute. You a Muffins fan. Okay, stop stalking me if you don't like me and if I'm so old. You know every fucking video that I made, but you still running your mouth. Like, I don't, I just really don't get it. Um, like, I'm really to the point where I feel like, I might have to smack a fucking young person one day because they just be so disrespectful. Like I see them in the streets and it'd be like the young girls, they'd be like 17, 16, 15, whatever. They, they young. They got the filthiest mouths I have ever seen. Like they'd be like 14, 15, 16 years old. And it's like when I was growing up in my day, 
we would never talk like that around anybody older than us. You know what I'm saying? Like, even though we would talk like that, you would never hear us talk like that. Like, we would just be quiet, even if we didn't know them. That was not how we would carry ourselves. But these young girls today, they could care less. And then if you give them too much eye contact, they really want to challenge you. Like, they really want to talk shit to you. They really want to challenge you. And, like, I have seen this. Um... And it has been done to me once. And I had to, you know, I don't know if it's because maybe they thought that I was young or whatever. Or, you know, sometimes they feel like, well, because you, you older, they feel like you ain't, um, you ain't got no balls or some shit like that. I don't know what it is, but you know, I was challenged with a girl just staring me down and the motherfucking grocery store looked me up and down. She probably was like 17, 18 years old. Look me up the fucking down. And I had to look her up the fucking down. And I was like, can I help you with something? Is there a problem? Because why are you over here looking at me like that? She turned her head and walked the fuck off of her and her little friends. Like, this is the thing that they do. And like, that's the little scare tactics. And it's it's sad because they feel like they can pick fights with anybody that's older than them. And one day, one of these young people are going to pick fights with the wrong motherfucker. And they not going to come back from that shit. And it's just sad. It's just sad. I just be, I be just feeling like, damn, the youth is like, the world is coming to a motherfucking end. Like, seriously, the people that run this country, the people that run a whole bunch of shit and the people that are here and that will one, one day be our future, you be just like, I'm doomed. I'm motherfucking doomed. Um, thank God I'm the age I am because I don't want to be around when all of this shit fucking take the fuck off. Cause I'm doomed. I'm fucking doomed. And I just think it's pathetic. Like, I just think it's pathetic. Like I was saying, they, these young girls, they be in the streets and they run their mouth and they, the way they talk is like filthy. When I'm saying about filthy, like who the hell talks at like that at that age? They'll say all kinds of things from derogatory shit to curse words to just about anything. And you just be like, does your mother know you talk like that? Like, I didn't even talk like that when I was that age. But when we were cursed, we wouldn't curse around older people. But the things that they say is far past curse words. And it's just like, you're hurting my ears with the shit. You're like hurting my ears. Like, have some respect for yourselves. And I think a lot of times that these young girls do this is because, and they're loud with it. They're not even quiet. They're loud and obnoxious. And it's like, are you trying to get attention? And do you think that it's cute? Or do you think that you're going to attract the opposite sex by talking like that? Like, I don't know. Either way, I'm, I just be so fucking confused by them all. I just be like, okay, you know what? I'm over it. I'm over it. So that's the that's the stuff that really be irritating me. The whole disrespectful shit and the whole part about like, oh, you old, you old, you old. Girl, you don't even know what old is, okay? That's just like, you know what I'm saying? Like, my old ass will slap the shit out of you. Try me, okay? I got kids your age. I got kids that's older than you. You don't even want none of this. And then it's like, oh, you a grandmother. You a grandmother. You shouldn't be... Because I'm somebody's grandmother? Okay, first of all... If I'm somebody's goddamn grandmother, why would you even be disrespectful to me? So you could be disrespectful to me because I'm somebody's grandmother. And this is what I'm trying to get y'all to understand. They feel like because you older, they can disrespect you, but you can't disrespect them or you can't say shit back to them. I'm so over the I'm so over a lot of the young generation now. I mean, it's not even that. It's like a lot of shit. And it's like a lot of shit in um the world in general. Like a lot of them don't have like you know what I'm saying you see like the um the mute the entertainment industry and like it's like okay so it's okay to just I don't I don't I I just don't know I I just don't know I know when I sometimes I just be like damn I just wish I could go back to the times when I was a teenager because those were the good old days you know what I'm saying we might not have cell phones and tablets and fucking laptops and shit but those were the good old days okay and it was a lot more peaceful back then and there was some shit popping off back then too. There was crack and cocaine and all of that shit, but there wasn't a whole bunch of this extra shit. Like, I be trying to figure out people, like, why do y'all take all these fucking other drugs that will really fuck y'all up? Like, you see how that shit did Pookie? You see how that shit did him? Hey, but you still gonna fucking hit that crack pipe? Are you still gonna pop that Molly or them Zannies? Why the fuck would y'all do that or the, that meth or all that shit? Like, y'all see how that, you walk around with a fucked up face and skin and teeth and you see that shit fucks you up like that, but you just feel like you invincible and that shit ain't going to happen to you. 
Okay? Or they done died, but you just feel like I've been just trying to figure that shit out for the life of me. Like, I'ma smoke weed. If I'm a, if I wanna get high, I'ma smoke some weed. Okay. I haven't had weed in like three, four months now. And I don't even think about the shit. But if I wanted to get high, I'ma smoke some some weed. Like, I'm not gonna go for that other hardcore shit that don't even keep you high. It got you selling your shit, got you looking fucked up. Okay, the most that the weed gonna do is make you gain some weight. You're gonna be a little fat, okay? You know what I'm saying? You're gonna gain some weight. That's why I had gained that weight, because you know I was smoking and I was eating snacks all the fucking time. Um, but I ain't about to sell my motherfucking laptop and cameras and wigs and shit to get fucking high off of no weed. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, okay. Um, I, I just don't get it. Like, seriously, I just don't get it. But, you know, it is what it is. I'm just, you know what? I'm just, I'm thankful that my ass was born in 1974 when the fuck I was born and not like in 1995 and 98 and none of that dumb shit. Like I have kids that age and like, I mean, it's cool. There's not, I'm not saying all of them is like that, but the ones that are, they need to get a serious reality check. Like seriously, talking about I done bumped my head cause 40 is old. Bitch, you done bumped your motherfucking head several times for even saying that dumb shit. Okay. For real. I don't know. But anyway, so hopefully I remember at the end of this video, at this real talk, I'm going to definitely be putting in a new music video. My son, um, who is known as Hollywood Shampo, um, y'all probably seen his video on my page before, um, you know, but... He is an upcoming artist. Um, well, he is an artist. He's been doing a lot of shows lately. He's been opening up. If y'all live in Schenectady, New York, where he lives at, where I just came from and stuff like that, Proctor's Theater on December 23rd, he will be opening up for like some, um, you know, like some old school rappers or whatever. But he does open up um, and he does have a manager and he does make his own music. So, <clears throat> excuse me. He does have a video that just popped off. So I would really appreciate it if you guys watch it. And if you see it on my Facebook page, I'm going to definitely link it below. Hopefully I remember. Make sure you guys share it because I really would like for it to go viral. Um, like I said, his name, it might not be the music that you like, guys. But you know what? We have to support those young people who are trying to do something positive. And like, you know, he, he don't do drugs and stuff like that. But he's a positive kid. He works. He's 25 years old. He works. He's a um, supervisor for a welding company. Um, so he has his family, his son, his girlfriend he takes care of. And he has his own little house and car and stuff. So I'm very proud of him. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, yes. You know what I'm saying? Like I was saying, his music might not be what you like, might not even be what I like. Um, but I like his video because it was shot right there where we where you know it's connected in New York. And it may not be some high budget shit, but you know what? I like the way he put it together. I like his energy and I like the whole fact that, you know what I'm saying, he included his friends in this video, like he's always done. And also my son Wuzzle is in the video too. Um He's in a, a, a lot of the video, like you'll see them on this bridge with the burning fire. That's my son Wuzzle with the with the gun, like some Uzi or something like that. And they're also in a laundromat together. So, you know, I like to support those who are trying hard. Like, but when I see you not doing shit and trying just to be disrespectful, then I can't. And I, you know what? I give that. I give my son that. He has um, never been disrespectful like that to me. Like, well, well. Let me let me not lie. He, we have gotten into our shit a lot of times, but he has come to terms and he has realized his wrong and he has apologized. And he he's you know I guess when they're young young they just really don't get it. But then when they get a little bit older and they mature and you just stop fucking with them, they start to realize you know what I fucked up. So I appreciate the fact that he was old enough and mature enough to realize his wrong and has apologized to me. And like he don't go for that shit. He don't go for that disrespectful to women shit. He don't go for that disrespectful to older people shit. He don't like all the little thoughts and stuff like that he's not into all of that kind of stuff but he's made like a drastic change and i really really am happy for him so make sure you guys check the video at the end it is called dream cash and hopefully i'll remember to put it in because i'll be forgetting some shit a lot of times um serious i don't but other than that we're gonna get into this real talk um I know, well, I don't look crazy because I don't have a whole bunch of makeup on i just look like me you know what i'm saying i just look like me um I am trying to find some 27 bundles, like not 27 bundles and count, but the color 27, like this one, so that I could color it like how I did this one with the highlights, because I want to make me a new wig, like, 
I'm serious. But anyway, if you want a real talk, you can definitely send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, real talk. And if you want to change the name of the people that's in your email, like, you know, her name is Sally, but you don't want nobody to know, then let me know that you have changed the names already. If not, I'm going to just assume that you did, okay, or that you just don't care. So other than that, let's get on to this real talk, you guys, okay? Huh? 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 What? Damn. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, Miss April. First of all, I would like to share my condolences to you and your family. I know how difficult it is to lose a part of your family. And thank you for sharing that with us because you do not owe us anything, especially your personal experiences. I hope you realize how many people you touch with your videos and how many people appreciate you. First of all, thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate that because sometimes it's hard to just like do YouTube because I feel like sometimes like I put all these hours and energy into stuff and I just feel like, you know what? Nobody even bothers to watch me. So what does it even matter if I'm even here? Or does anybody appreciate me? Um, but I, I, I thank you so much because I know that people do. So I thank you. And also thank you for your condolences for my Coco. Um, you guys know that my dog passed away um, two weeks ago. So I'm doing really, really good with that. Like, seriously, I'm doing really, really good with that. Um, um, I do talk to him every day, though. So, you know. And I'm pretty sure there are pet lovers, fur baby lovers out there that understand that we still talk to our pets, even if they're not here physically. Um, so here we go. So I will try to keep this real talk story as short as I can. <clears throat> I have a friend who I have known for about six years. Let's call him Mike. Mike and I used to work together. Ever since we have known each other, we both have been in long-term relationships with other people. He was very much in love with his girlfriend at the time. A couple years after knowing each other, he proposed to his girlfriend and they got married about a year later. We lost contact, we lost contact due to new careers. I heard of his marriage through a mutual friend as well as them having a daughter together and was so happy for them because they were both really good people. Let's jump forward to this year. A couple of months ago, I found out his wife passed away unexpectedly. My friend and I went to the service in order to pay our respects and let Mike know we would be there for him. Mike is new to his career, law enforcement, and did not know that I had been in law enforcement for about three years now within the same county. He reached out to me a couple weeks after the service asking me how I liked my position as, and for my guidance. He also, he also suggested we hang out so we could talk since he couldn't confide in a lot of other people. After we hung out a couple of times, he came over to my house and one thing led to another. After some drinks and he, after, <clears throat> excuse me guys, one thing led to another. After some drinks, he leaned in and kissed me. I moved back in shock and he, he proceeded to kiss me. Before that night, he shared he was having romantic feelings for someone but was feeling guilty about it. All I told him was do whatever makes him happy and his wife would want him to be happy. But is it too soon for him to want to pursue a relationship? I felt a little awkward about it, but I too have developed feelings for him. We have been low key seeing each other for a few weeks now. This department that we work for is kind of small and I also have family who work with him. I do not want anyone to know about us dating because I think it's too soon and I would just end up looking like the heartless bitch with the widow. I feel he is very genuine when he says he is not looking for a rebound and that he does want to have a real relationship with me. <clears throat> he has already introduced me to his daughter who is now three and so precious. He has also in introduced me to some of his friends and his wife's family when I helped him move some things as well. So basically he helped, he, he introduced her to his wife's family when she helped him move some things. I don't want everyone to hate me and start off on the wrong foot because I'm dating him. Another thing that trips me out is that I have never seen him cry about her. He can talk about her like it's nothing. And I'm just very surprised he could go from being head over heels in love with her. Like I remember him being from now barely acknowledging her memory. I'm just not sure if that's how men grieve and move on or what. What do you think of the situation? 
You could read this for Real Talk or write me back. Any response from you would be greatly appreciated. Happy holidays to you and your family. And I'm going to just say that her name is not this, and I'm going to just call her April. We're going to just call her April, okay? Because her name starts with A. So we're just going to call her April. So first of all, as you see, April and I think his name was Mike have, um, maybe we should, we're going to call her Ann. Ann and Mike have been friends for a long time and, you know, they kind of lost touch with each other because of their careers. But before they kind of lost touch, he got married, Mike got married and he had a daughter. Now she heard of this and she was happy for them because she felt like him and his girlfriend, you know, they were happy together. They were good people. And they deserved to be married. They deserved to have a baby. They deserved to have a family. And they were just good people in general. And that's good when you have other people that could wish you well and just not hate because there are some people out there that just be just looking from the outside and just be hating. You know what I'm saying? Like really hating. So, I like that. I like the fact that she's able to be open minded about someone that she knows and feel like, you know, this woman that he's with was a good woman. They would belong together. They deserve happiness. And that's good. I like to see that. Um, but, you know, like I said, they lost touch. And the last time that they seen each other or basically not even the last time, but the next time that they were able to see one another is when Mike had lost his wife. You know, she passed away. Not really sure what the problem was or what the issues was, but it doesn't really matter. But she passed away and she left behind Mike and a daughter. Now, you know, being that she went to the services just to pay her respects, you know, let Mike know, hey, we're here for you. If you need anything, anybody to talk with, we're here. I'm here. And, you know, he confided in her. And I guess after Talking with someone several hours of a day or spending time with them, you may develop feelings. And that's what ended up happening for the both of them. Mike ended up developing feelings for Anne, and Anne ended up developing feelings for Mike. And you know something? <clears throat> they might have had the um, kind of feelings already for one another, but just not, you know, acting on it before he got married, you know what I'm saying? Or the feelings may not have been there and that, like, not that strong, but they knew one another. And that was uh, uh, that played a part in them acting and them, them growing for feelings for one another because they already knew one another. You know what I'm saying? So they already have been friends, and that kind of is it's cool. That's good to build a, a relationship with. And sometimes it's real good to have a friendship before you build a relationship, especially if you know the person real well. Then you know their ins and outs. But anyway. So, you know, one thing led to another. He leaned in and kissed her. They was having drinks, whatever. But here's the thing. They're both in law enforcement. It sounds kind of like they work for the same department or in the same building. I'm not really sure. But she did say that she had family members that work with him. So they may not work in the same building, but they work in the same field as law enforcement. And she's feeling kind of... I guess she's feeling kind of guilty because she don't want to seem like she's a cold-hearted bitch that took um, the widow. And... She also kind of feeling on the, not even the defensive side, but I feel like she's feeling a little bit, little bit leery because Mike is not grieving the way that she would grieve. You know what I'm saying? Like Mike isn't talking about her, like his ex, his, 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 his passed away wife. He's not talking about his dearly beloved or his, his wife that passed away. He's not grieving for her. Like she would expect him to grieve or as she would grieve, you know what I'm saying? Um, he's introduced her to some of his friends. He's introduced her to his daughter. She's also met his wife's family, you know, because she helped him move some things. So, but she really doesn't want a lot of people to know because she doesn't want people to look at her like wrong. And I could totally understand that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we have to kind of like come outside of our shell though. Also like, and like on some real shit, we can't always worry about what other people think about us. You know what I'm saying? We can't always feel that way. Like there's two people in this relationship. There's not just you, there's him. So if you think people are looking at you like, oh, you're the cold hearted bitch that's messing with the widow, then how do you think people are looking at him? And he is the widow. You know what I'm saying? His wife is the one that passed away. You can't look at it like that. Some people grieve also differently. Like, um, like for myself, um, my dog died. And you know, you guys see me on real talk crying about the shit. It, it like it broke me up, like it broke me down. And like I cried again yesterday, but I cry probably like every other day now. Not every day, but I cry a lot about my dog. And that's my grieving. But then there's some people that will look at me and be like, oh, he, 
Why are you crying over that? That's just a dog. Like some people feel like that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody grieved differently. Or like when my son, Wazoo, he loved Coco. He cried like probably 10 seconds about it. And he was, he didn't cry anymore, but he talks about him, but he, he, he doesn't, um, he's not emotional over it. Like I am, you know what I'm saying? He kind of like moved on to the next dog. Now I'm not sure about the new dog. And maybe that's just his way of dealing with it. You know what I'm saying? Because he was so used to Coco being a baby and, um, and nurturing Coco when he was a baby that maybe this is his way of dealing with it. Everybody has a different way of grieving. And just because you don't see him do that in your presence does not mean that he's not doing that. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, this man is going home and he's going home to his daughter who's three years old and he has to take care of her. You know what I'm saying? He is a single parent now. He has to take care of her. He has to teach her everything. He has to do stuff for his daughter. You don't know how he's grieving. At the end of the day, he could be just sitting there with his daughter and he's talking to his daughter and he's trying to explain things to her about being a little girl or how to wipe when he's potty training her and that shit could just builds up in him to where he's breaking down so you don't really know how he grieves just because he doesn't do it around you there are some people that don't want other people to see them break down or they don't want them to see them emotional or they don't want you to see his soft side because then there are some men who feel like well I don't want to cry in front of her like that because she might feel like I'm soft or I'm pussy. You know what I'm saying? Like some people think like that. That's just how some people think. And it's unfortunate that you have to, that we as a society label men that cry pussy or weak because that's not the case. Everybody's entitled to cry. Everybody's entitled to have emotions. Everybody's entitled to have feelings. And not everybody has to deal with shit the same way as other people would deal with things. You know what I'm saying? Like with me, when my grandfather died, that was the very first funeral that I've ever went to when my grandfather died. I was 14 years old and he didn't just die of natural causes. He was going out to bingo one night. And I'll never forget because he was like my father to me. We lived with him. Him. All my life until, I, you know, from the age of four to the age of 10, I lived with my grandfather. We lived in the projects. The same apartment where my, mother, where my mother lives at now is where we lived at, my grandfather. And, you know, I came back. Um, we lived with him from the age of four to 10. And then we went to live in Brooklyn for four years. And, you know, then I went back, me and my mom, we went back to live with my grandfather again when I was 14. So, my grandfather went out because he loved to play bingo. You know, bingo was a shit. And it probably still is the shit. And I never forget, he would walk. And we lived in Flushing, Queens. You know what I'm saying? And um, he went to this um this 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 town hall place, some some kind of place where he would play at. And he'd meet up with his friends. And it was a rainy night. And somebody was speeding down the street. And they didn't see him. Or they didn't see him. And they hit him. And they hit him so hard that he went flying up in the air. And he hit the back of their car. And they just took off. It was a hit and run. They never stopped. They never caught the person that hit my grandfather. You know what I'm saying? My grandfather was in the hospital, um, paralyzed from the neck down. They said he wouldn't make it. I think he lived for probably like 11 days or maybe a little bit under that. And it broke my heart. Like it tore me and broke me down. Okay. Because I was always with him and I was like his child. We was together all the time. So because he passed away, my mom, it broke my mom down too. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I think like for me, my mom was stronger. She was a stronger person. So I don't think maybe she was strong just because of me. But for me, it just put me in like a bad state of depression. And so I was depressed for like, a year and a half of my life. Like I didn't go to school. I, I missed like months and months of school. I didn't sleep. I, and then when I would sleep, I wouldn't wake up. Like, I, you know, I would sleep all types of hours. And like, I was really depressed for like uh, over a year, about a year and a half over my grandfather's death. And I would constantly hear him, constantly hear him. So people's passings affect people differently. Everybody grieves differently. You know what I'm saying? Um, everybody grieves differently. And, um, you can't say that he's not mourning her or that he doesn't miss her or because he doesn't speak about her because maybe things, a lot of times people are private with their shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you can't feel like because he's not showing that in front of you, that that's not how he felt about his wife. Obviously he loved her. He married her and he had a baby with her and shit affects people differently, but then shit could affect him just like that. 
And you just don't know because that's his private moment. He maybe he don't want to talk with his about his wife around you because maybe he may feel like that's a form of disrespect. You know what I'm saying? Or just maybe he just want to keep that part of him to himself and to privately. Or maybe he don't want to talk about her and grieve about her around you because he don't want to feel like he's disrespecting you or he don't want to hurt your feelings. You know what I'm saying? People. People do things for certain reasons. Things happen for certain reasons and people grieve different ways and people handle things different ways. So, you know what I'm saying? Like for me, like, I don't know, like, I guess I can't really say this, but I guess if I was to lose like my husband, if he died and and then I, I, I ended up with somebody else, I probably would feel weird um, crying around them about the one that I just lost. I probably would because I, I would probably feel like, you know, I'm not be giving you my undevoted attention. And you may feel like, um, you know, I don't really care for you like that because I'm crying over somebody. And also you got to keep in mind, and that he did say to you, like, he don't want you to feel like you are the rebound chick. Okay. So if he don't want you to feel like that, then I don't think that's maybe one reason why he doesn't want to talk about his wife around you. But I'm pretty sure like, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, everybody handles situations totally different. Everybody is entitled to grief in their own way. And it has nothing to do with because he's a man. It has to do with the individual person as a whole. You know what I'm saying? And as far as you want to be on a down low with the relationship and you feel like it's moving too fast, you know something? You always have to go with your instincts, your first instincts. If you feel like it's moving too fast, then that's fine. You are entitled to feel that way. You know what I'm saying? You are entitled to feel how you feel, but don't feel how you feel because you might be scared of how people are going to judge you. Never feel that way. You know what I'm saying? Like we all have a point in the time in our life where we are worried about somebody thinking about how we look or, or just judging us in general, you know, and I have been there many times. And even though I do say to this point, to this day, I don't care what people think about me. I do. And then I don't, you know what I'm saying? I do. And I don't like, there's certain stages to that. I think like there's certain fucking stages to that. Like meaning, um, back in the day, I wouldn't go across the street or to the corner store without having my hair done. Uh, like just looking decent. Like I wasn't wearing makeup back then, but I had to make sure I looked decent. You know what I'm saying? My hair had to be done and stuff. Now to this day, let me go to Walmart and I don't have no makeup on or no wig on or nothing. Let me tell y'all something. A bitch will put on a fucking head wrap and I could care less about my outfit. Okay. And if I see somebody that be like, Oh my God, it's my it's my lovers. Cause I've seen plenty of people when I look like that in public. Um, I, this me, this who I am. I don't always have to be jazzed the fuck up and be all put together. You know what I'm saying? This is who the fuck I am. Take me for what the fuck I am. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the part of me, like I said, that stages to it. There's stages to it. So that part of me, I don't care about what people think about me. Like, if you see me in the street and you see like, oh, she's, you, you might judge me from what I got on and be like, oh, this, look at this ugly bitch or this bum ass bitch. But then you really don't know me because then I can go home and get dressed and just come and show out. And you'd be like, oh, shit, that's the same bit. So I don't really care what people think about me when I come out in public and how I look. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm just I'm a human being. But then there's the part of me that does care what people think about me. Um, also, but that part of it, like if you see me out in the street and I ain't got no hair and makeup on. Oh, well, I don't I, I wasn't born with the shit on. Okay. It is who I am. I got a scarf on. I don't wear a wig all the time. I don't wear makeup all the time. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm human. So if you're worried about the relationship because of people judging you, then sweetheart, let me tell you something. You could wait two years down the road to date this man, and or or you could wait two years down the road and make it public that you're dating this man. And people are gonna be like, hmm. You know he was he was married and she had she all with his daughter and stuff. They gonna talk about you regardless, sweetheart. So why why hold something that you really want because of what people fucking gonna say, sweetheart? They gonna say whatever the fuck they gonna say regardless. It's either two years from now or ten years from now. And but if you really like this guy and you are interested in him and he into you and you into him, then you know what? Go for it. But if you feel like it's being too rushed because of your own feelings, then that's fine. Take it a little bit slower. But if you feel like you're worried about what other people are going to say, 
sweetheart, let me tell you something. People gonna always talk. It don't matter. You know what? I feel like this. You still, uh, if you talking good or bad, bitch, I'm still relevant. Okay. That's how I feel about it now. Bitch, I'm still motherfucking relevant. Whether you say that my skin is dry or that I got to get my motherfucking teeth fixed or that my hair is fake, my lashes is fake or whatever the fuck else you want to say about me, bitch, you still making me relevant because you're talking about me. And obviously if you're talking about a person, that means you're thinking about them. So obviously I'm still on your motherfucking mind. If you really didn't give a fuck about me and if you really didn't like me and you could care less, you wouldn't be thinking about me and you wouldn't be talking about me and I wouldn't be relevant. So regardless of what you feel, honey, people going to talk and they always going to say shit. There is nothing you could do to stop people from running their fucking mouth. You could save the fucking world from war and hunger and anything else and all types of drugs. Bitch, they still going to talk shit about you. They're going to be like, no, this bitch didn't fucking think she could save the world. She done saved the world. Why'd she do that? <clears throat> she trying to get some kudos and stuff. So it doesn't really matter. People are always going to talk. And sometimes we just got to let that shit go and just do what's good for us and do what makes us fucking happy. And that's what the fuck I do. And I expect you and to do the same fucking thing, bottom line. But stop worrying about how he grieving, okay? Because like I said, this man could be grieving on his own and you just not around. Don't ask him how he grieving. Don't assume that he don't grieve. Don't assume that he don't love his wife or don't assume anything. Everybody is different. He don't have to grieve in front of you. What makes you so special that he got to sit there and cry and pour his heart out? Yeah, he might have open up to you and explain things to you and talk to you about shit. But grieving is a private thing. That's a very private moment. I don't think I would want everybody around me when I was grieving either. It's a private moment. Sometimes we need some privacy. Okay. So uh, let's move on to the next. All right, you guys. <clears throat> hey, April, you can call me Rose. I need advice with my fiance. I'm going to be 21 this year in May, and he is 28. We have been together for three years, and our wedding will be in January. Oh, shit, that's next month, girl. I feel our relationship is going downhill. Oh, okay. We live together with his parents, and lately it seems as though all we do is argue. He works, and I was laid off a couple of months ago. So he works, and I was laid off a couple of months ago. And ever since I've noticed that when things have gotten worse, he's always getting upset if I don't pick something up right away like OCD. I cook, clean the kitchen, bedroom, living room, clothes, and iron for him. But if it's not one thing, it's something else. He never sees the things that I do. He's always telling me I'm lazy and I don't ever do shit and making jokes because I'm a little thicker and gained weight. It's a big thing if I don't do something he wants, but if it's something I want, he won't do it. He has his medical card and smokes a lot every day and is always coughing. And I have told him to cut back, but he doesn't listen. His medical card, meaning his medical marijuana card, y'all. Um, he won't cut back, but he doesn't, but he doesn't listen. But if I take a hit of his weed occasionally, because mentally I'm depressed and I just want something to numb the pain and ease my brain, he gets mad. I try spending time with him, whether it's going for a walk or to do something. And it's an argument because all he wants to do is work and sleep. He tells me to go by myself. And then when I leave the room and cry, he has no compassion and just says, here we go. She's crying again. I've gotten to the point where I'm depressed, but still want to work things out. We have a pug dog and he gets rough. And once even through the dog where his leg was messed up. Whoa, I feel stuck and I need your advice. Please help. P.S. I love watching your channel and your real talks makes my day. Thank you for your time. <clears throat> so first of all, Rose is 21 and her man, her fiance is 28 and they live with his parents. So she got laid off. He still work. He got a medical marijuana car and he smoked all the damn time. He always complaining about she's lazy and fat or whatever. You know what I mean? Game way. But she cooks, cleans, um, irons for him, does whatever. He still complains. If she tries to take a hit of his weed, he complaining about that. You know, because she mentally depressed. He always talking shit. He don't want to spend no time with her. He just not compassionate. He basically like, oh, here she go again crying. Like, you know, he has no sympathy. And also they got a dog together, a little pug. And this nigga got um, pissed off and threw the dog. And the dog's foot, the, the dog's leg is messed up. First of all, let me tell you something, Rose. And she's supposed to be getting married to him next month. First of all, let me tell you something, sweetheart. He threw the motherfucking dog. Okay? 
Now, I know some people might not be compassionate to animals, but you don't go around throwing animals. Who the fuck does that shit? Like on some real shit. Now, I got I I still say I got three dogs because I still feel like I do, but I got pets. Why would you go? This is the shit that I don't like with people. Like you are a bully when you throw it and beating on dogs like that. Like you don't even deserve to have an animal. Um, Rose, you live with his parents. Where are your parents at? Why are you living there with him and his parents? Why are you allowing him to throw your animal around? So now the dog's leg is messed up because he didn't threw the dog. Okay. And like, how's that make you feel like if he threw the dog, cause I can only imagine what the fuck he going to do to you. When y'all move out together, if he ain't compassionate and he talking shit and he don't want to be bothered with you, what the fuck make you think that he going to be real nice to you? He going to treat you like a bed of roses. I mean, like, I'm just saying, girl, let me tell you something. January is next fucking month and everybody always trying to make a new year's resolution. They trying to do something new for the new year's, like lose weight or whatever. How about you lose his ass for the new year? I'm just saying, first of all, I'm not about to be living with nobody and their motherfucking parents in their house, okay? Second of all, if you calling me all kinds of names, treating me like shit, ain't compassionate, I'm not fucking with you. If you don't want to be bothered with me, I'm not fucking with you. If you throwing our motherfucking animal around, well, nigga, I'm going to fuck you up and I'm not fucking with you. You better hope you don't go to jail for some shit like that. That's animal cruelty. He can go to jail for some shit like that. Like, who the fuck throws an animal? And now the dog's legs is messed up. And that's so fucked up because the dog ain't do shit to him. And if the dog did do some shit to him, he still didn't deserve that shit like what the fuck could the dog mostly do poop piss whatever so you throw a helpless animal that's the shit i be talking about like i love animals and like true indeed coco has peed on my rug a numerous a numerous of times when when i got sugar and you know what i did i had to deal with the shit because i'm the one that brought him in here i mean i'm the one that brought sugar ass in here he wasn't doing that shit before sugar came OK, so I'm not saying it was all my fault because Coco knew what the fuck he was doing. But, you know, what I'm saying that's my dog and I love him. And I'm going to just have to deal with it. I may scold him and I may have scolded the sugar, too, because she did his shit, too. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not about to go and throw them like I'm not about to go and throw the dog. Like, I think like people that do that shit is just cowards. When you can beat and hurt a dog, you a coward because you know that dog can't really do no shit like that to you. But had it been like a bigger dog, like some pit bull or like some fucking German shepherd or some just like some big ass dog in general, I bet you that nigga wouldn't have did that shit then because he would have tried that shit and that nigga would have had his fucking feelings hurt. He would have had a fucking hole in a chunk of his skin. OK, he would have lost a chunk of his skin. But you go and you pick on the little dogs that do shit because you angry or you upset and then you smoke all day long. Let me tell you something. I like weed too. Though I ain't had none in three, mo three months, you might not think that I like weed still, but you know what it is, what it is. I don't really care about it like that. If I don't have it, I don't have it. But I'm going to tell you what, I'm not about to be spending money every day smoking weed, getting high all the time. There's a time and a place for everything. And it's cool that you got a marijuana car. You got to, you know, relax sometimes. But when you smoking all the time, you about to cough up a motherfucking lung, then it's a problem. Okay. And if you're 28 years old and you got you and your girlfriend living at your mama's house, then that's a motherfucking problem. Because had you, um, cause he works all the time, but maybe if you stop smoking weed, you can have your own place. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. I'm not, I don't, I never try to mess up nobody's relationship. Cause that's not what the fuck I'm here for. I want everybody to be happy and everybody to be in a relationship. I don't care if you with another man or another woman <coughs> or man, woman, whatever. But here's the thing. Cause everybody deserves happiness. But when you telling me that he ain't compassionate, he call you names, he talks shit. He say you lazy. He throwing your dog and shit and vice versa and all kind of other bullshit. Then I don't really think that you need to be in that relationship. I damn sure don't think you need to be getting married next month. Like you trying to work on it. What are you trying to work on, sweetheart? What you need to be working on, honey, is getting a new job. OK, and, and working on getting yourself a new relationship with yourself, not with another man, not with another woman, but get a new relationship with you. Take your little pug and go about your business. OK, because for real. Like I fucking said, if he done threw the dog, cause I can only imagine what the fuck he gonna do to you. And that's kind of fucked up, like on some real shit. Like I could be on some real fucked up shit and get, find out where her fucking email address is and report him. But you know, I, I'm not going to do that because it's called karma and what goes around comes back the fuck around. But I just really feel like that's real fucked up that you would go and you would throw an animal. And so now the poor dog's animal, the poor dog's legs is messed up and the dog is handicapped because of you right? Because of you. 
You, this man is 28 years old. He is damn near 30 and you are throwing animals, throwing motherfucking tantrums. So because you can't get your way and because you're upset, you throw helpless animals around. Okay. The first time I would have seen that, I would have been pissed off. I would have probably jumped on his ass and tried to kill him. And then I would have called the cops and had him arrested. And then I would have left him the fuck alone. Like you ain't about to be throwing my motherfucking dog. You crazy. Not about to be throwing my animal around. Sweetheart, Rose, if you stick around for this, sweetheart, amen, and get married to him, then you just as dumb as he is, okay? Because he's dumb. He's fucking pathetic. That's a pathetic ass man. Like, men are supposed to keep you safe when you're in a relationship with them. They're supposed to build you up and make you feel good about yourself. You know what I'm saying? And make you feel love. Not make you feel like this, less of a person, and make you feel scared and make you feel like shit. Why did it sound like somebody was out there outside of my door? Like, I be I swear I'd be hearing things. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's what a man is supposed to do. They're not supposed to tear you the fuck down and beat on a family pet. That's just like some coward ass. That's some that's some real coward ass shit. Like on some real shit, you on some coward ass shit. Like that's some real coward move. Like just from that alone, I wouldn't fuck with him no more. Like I'm sorry. Some people might be like, "Girl, that's taking it to the extreme. You uh you gonna break up with him because he threw the dog? Yes, bitches. I'm gonna break up with that motherfucker because he threw the goddamn dog. Could you imagine? Like you know, what I'm saying like people like that, you have to keep an eye out for them because like those type of people, you have to really watch them because what if you have a baby with them? Like I know you females have seen and men have seen on plenty of times on the news where the moms. The, the mom's boyfriend killed the baby or shook the baby or just couldn't take the crying and the baby is dead. Like there are plenty of stories about that on the news. I've seen plenty of stories. If you haven't Google the shit. Okay. I have seen where, um, in Albany, New York, this black guy was dating this white girl and, um, he fucking burnt the little baby up with cigarettes, like was sticking cigarettes in the baby's skin and fed the baby bleach and stuff and killed the poor baby. Or did the baby die? I, the baby, I think, was fucked up in the head after that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, shit like that. Like, like when people, like, I don't understand when people are so, like, overwhelmed with a baby. A baby. A baby who's helpless, like an animal. They get so mad, they start punching the baby and shaking the baby and stuff. Like, don't you realize that by you hitting the child or the animal it's going to make you cry even more what fucking sense does that make now you're really going to have to hear cry like and like with people like like that are animal to animal cruelty people like people that are cruel to animals those people are are, are fucking lost in the head like seriously like i've seen like a lot of cases where people have been really cruel to animals and there's something wrong with them and they just don't stop there. They continue and it gets worse. Sometimes the motherfuckers end up being fucking serial killers and all kind of weird shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so if you end up marrying him, honey, you set yourself up for that. But I'm here to tell you, and I'm pretty sure that there's other women on here or men on here that could tell you, leave his ass the fuck alone. Like, I, I'm sorry, but he's 28 years old for one, and he should know better than that. He's a mature ass man, but obviously he's not. If he want to lay around and smoke weed all day and work and sleep, then let him go ahead and do that. But, honey, the door is right there. Hurry up and leave. And on top of that, he lived with his parents, and he got you living with his parents, and then his mother, his parents are allowing him to kick animals around. And then bully you too. Like, that whole family is screwed the fuck up. Like, I wouldn't even want to be there. Like, for real, like, girl, bye. Tell him goodbye, sweetheart. If you love my real talk so much and they make your day, I hope I have made your day. And for real, and you have decided to take you and the pug and go about your business and find a job and a place of your own and leave him the fuck alone. Y'all been together three years. Three years is long and it ain't motherfucking long. Like, on some real shit, three years ain't fucking long at all. Three years come and go real fucking quick, okay? Real quick. Now, if you've been together 30 years, then I would be like, okay, girl, y'all gonna have to really work something out. You gonna have to stop having animals around him. You gonna have to have him take him to counseling or some shit like that. But then again, if you kick my motherfucking animal <coughs> or throw him, 
I'm still probably going to not fuck with you because I'm going to think there's something seriously wrong with you. But three years, sweetheart, you can find somebody that's way better. This is what I be trying to tell people. You leave a bad relationship because once you leave a bad relationship, you look for more or you look for better. At least I would hope you would. Um, and it just allows you to, to want more for yourself. At least I hope it would. You know what I'm saying? But when you're in a relationship with somebody who or is abusing you mentally because you just said you need to hit the weed because you you mentally fucked up. That's because you still with him. You allow that shit. I'm not about to allow anybody to fuck me up mentally in the head like that. I'm not about to allow that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like seriously, I'm not. I'm not about to allow any man fuck me up mentally to where I can't focus and I feel like I have to drink or use some type of drugs to feel like I feel better. And to numb the pain. And when you are around somebody that got you feeling like that, then, sweetheart, it's time for you to leave them the fuck alone on some real shit. Like, there would be no reason for me to even want to work anything out. Because what makes you think that he's going to change? Not at all, sweetheart. Not at all. Point blank period, he's not the one for you. That's why he's still at home living with his mammy and his pappy. Because he's not the one for you, okay? On some real shit. I'm not about to allow anybody to have me become a drug addict or an alcoholic or, or use any type of drugs because they got me mentally depressed and fucked the fuck up. That right there is like, okay, you know what, bitch, you going to have to fucking um, go about your business. Why the fuck y'all think I he I'm here? Okay. Why the fuck do y'all think that I live in Arizona? Okay. I left my husband for reasons. Okay. And cause we just wasn't getting along and I couldn't take it no more. So I left. I fucking left. And yeah, he might have changed. He did change a lot. So, you know, things have changed. But you sometimes you got to leave. Sometimes you have to motherfucking leave. Sometimes you just can't turn back. Sometimes you can't go back. But, sweetheart, if he got you smoking weed and a nigga don't even want you to hit the weed, like a couple of pulls, that nigga stingy too. Girl, bye. I don't fuck with people that are stingy with weed neither, Okay. I'm saying, if you smoking, we should be smoking together. I'm just saying. But if I don't smoke, I don't smoke. But if I want to just get a hit of the shit, don't be acting like that. Like, don't be acting all stingy. Because if you stingy with some weed, God only imagines what the fuck else you stingy with. You know what I'm saying? Like, those are signs right there, like red flags. Like, oh, he he's abusing animals. Oh, he's stingy with some fucking weed. Okay. Pathetic. You think uh, pathetic, like really, really pathetic? Like, okay, nigga, if you stingy with some weed, goodbye. You really fucking stingy, okay? And then on top of that, he's talking about you lazy. When you cook, clean, iron, and cook. Girl, listen, let me tell you something. I don't know, maybe because I'm just so stubborn, but I ain't about to be standing around ironing no man's clothes. That's just me. I'm not about to. I mean, I might iron you a shirt and shit, but I'm not about to be your motherfucking housemaid, okay? Milkmaid, housemaid. I'm not about to do that shit. Like, I'm not about to be your slave. Don't try to make yourself feel relevant because you don't have no job, sweetheart. What you need to do is find yourself a place to stay and leave him the fuck alone. Point blank, period. Okay, sweetheart? Hmm. And take the dog with you, please. Okay, so this one right here. Hey, April, I would first like to say I love your videos and you and your family. I love you too, Diva. Thank you. Okay, now let get, let's get to the T. You can call me Tasha. That's so funny. I have never heard it. I have not heard that name Tasha in so long. I had a friend, Tasha. About a year ago or so, I met this man at a gas station. Let's call him Tim. We talked for a couple of months, but I wasn't really into him like that. Plus, his sex game was weak. She put it with capitals and exclamation marks. Was weak, okay? So I stopped seeing and talking to him. Okay, fast forward about four months later. My dad passed away. Why is everybody passed away? My dad passed away. My dad has a lot of kids, and many of them I have never met. Well, as we are getting plans together for the funeral, I'm meeting new family members. One in particular is my cousin, Shay. Well, me and Shay become friends on Facebook and started getting close. Well, one day Shay posts a picture of her and her man. It's Tim. They have been together five years with three kids. I'm in shock, but I say nothing to her about him and me. Two weeks later, Tim pops up in my DMs asking why I stopped messing with him and that he missed me. 
I went off. I told him everything and how he wasn't shit. He starts pleading with me to not tell my cousin, but I don't know if I should. You know how women can be when you are telling them about their man. But I have proof that he was still been pursuing me every couple months. Like, I'm going to try to forget he my cousin man. Like, okay, LOL. Should I stay? Should I tell Shay what her man's been up to or just keep my mouth closed? Any advice is helpful. Tasha. Let me tell y'all something. Let me just tell y'all something. Now, Tasha write about that. When you tell females about their man, they feel like you just hate in. Some of them, not all of them, but they feel like you just hate in. You know what I'm saying? Or jealous or, you know what I'm saying? Or you want him. Either way, it's all hate. You know what I'm saying? And they they might want to get into an argument with you. And sometimes they'll listen to you and then they'll still stay with him. Okay? And then some of them, when you come with the receipts, the proof, they like, oh, word, girl. Okay, cool. Thank you for letting me know. Now, I'm going to tell you something. This is this happened a long, long time ago, but it's still, it's kind of relevant to this. All right? This was like a long time ago. Um, geesh. And this shit was like back in like, oh, man. I want to say this was like back in like, how many kids did I have at the time? I think I had only like. Two. I had two kids at the time. So this was before I even knew my husband, way before I knew him. So anyway, this is when I lived in New York, of course. <clears throat> so this light-skinned dude, he, you know, he approaches me. And he was like light-skinned, like not light-skinned, light-skinned, but he was like, he was a little bit darker than me. Now, first of all, y'all know I don't really be into light skin. I guess I didn't have a preference back then, because like I said, it was really a long time ago. But either way, neither here nor there. We exchange numbers, okay? We exchange numbers with each other. And he called me, he, he called me a couple of times and I can't remember if I called him or not. I don't remember, but I remember this, like one day he called me and then like, I don't remember if it was right away or it, it probably wasn't right away. It was, but it was in that same day I get a phone call. Okay. From a female. And I don't even remember what his name was because he was not even that important. Like, we spoke on the phone. We, we seen each other in person, like, one time. And that was when we exchanged numbers. And then we spoke on the phone a few times. You know what I'm saying? Like, a good few times. But we never seen each other in person. Like, after that, we never hung out or nothing like that. Um, but I remember his girl called me. Her name was Brenda. Bertha. Her name was Bertha. Okay? Her name was Bertha. So, she called me. And she called my house phone, okay? And she asked me, um, did I know such and such, her boyfriend? And I was like, excuse me? She asked me, did I know him? And I don't remember exactly what I told her. I don't, but I, I basically denied it, okay? I don't remember if I told her I didn't know him or I don't remember if I told her I was just his friend. Basically, I just denied the fact that he was trying to get with me or anything like that. But then like two minutes, five minutes, between five minutes later, I star 69 her number and I called her back. Because a part of me was like, you know what? Tell her because you wouldn't want nobody to do that to you. You know what I'm saying? And you don't know him from a hole in the wall. And that's another female. And y'all supposed to stand strong with one another and look out for each other. And that shit ain't right. So I start 69, Bertha. And um, she answered. And I told her who I was. And I told her, your man has been calling my phone. And this is where I met him. And he has been calling my phone trying to get with me. And she was like, you know what? Thank you so much. Because you didn't even have to tell me none of that. But thank you. I remember I remember her thanking me. And, I, and I'm, I remember her telling me, like, you know, that's what a real woman does. You know what I'm saying? I can't remember word for word, but I remember her telling me this, okay? <laughs> Lo and behold, I ended up meeting her. We was on the phone with each other for a while, me and her, she and I. And um, I remember meeting her one day. Um, I don't remember how we got to meet each other, but um, she's a nice lady. She's she was older than me, of course. But we ended up becoming like not like, oh, the best of friends, but we ended up becoming like, every time we would see one another, we would talk to each other. And I remember her telling me, you know what, thank you so much for saving me from him because he was a dog and et cetera, et cetera. So <clears throat> the moral of the story is 
even though sometimes some people will be like, no, what? You should mind your business and not say nothing. But sometimes, you know what? Sometimes we do want to mind our business. And sometimes some people will be like, girl, don't even say nothing to her about it because she's still going to stay with him. Or don't, don't even say nothing to him about it or to her about it because she's just going to be like, you want him. You know what? Sometimes you still have to say something because it's in good conscience. And it's also because you're a woman and you wouldn't want that to be done to you. And even though she may not take heed to what you're saying right now, maybe down the road she will, you know what I'm saying? And then again, it's like, you know what, if you don't say something, then you a dog and you a dirty bitch for not saying anything. So like, okay, now does he know that you are his girl's cousin? Because y'all was at the funeral together. So yeah, he does know that. Okay. he I'm pretty sure he does know that you and her are related, but he's still sending you DMs. The whole point is you didn't know. You didn't know that he and her were together. You didn't even know Shay as your cousin. Y'all just met each other through Facebook and y'all see, you see his pictures on her page. So, you know, I don't even think they met in person. They didn't even meet each other in person. Okay. But she seen Shay. They became friends on Facebook and this is her cousin. And then she saw his pictures, Tim's pictures. So you didn't know. So it's not your fault um, that you was messing with your cousin's man because you didn't even know your cousin. You didn't know that was your cousin. You didn't know anything about her until your father's passing. And I do, you know what? I do apologize. I, I'm sorry for your loss, sister. I really am sorry for your loss. And you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes it's hard to say sorry to somebody when they lose someone, but just know this, that every day is a new day and you just be strong for your father and your family. You know what I'm saying? Be that, you know, like the same thing, like, don't allow this situation to override what you need to do. But here's the thing, sweetheart, Tasha, you ain't know that Tim had a girl and you didn't know that Tim's girl was actually your cousin. Okay. And that they had three kids together. You didn't know that because he told you whatever the fuck it is he told you. And you just got rid of him because, Hey, you wasn't really into him. And also because his dick game was whack. Like, okay, I get it. Don't nobody want to be with nobody who got a whack dick game, okay? I'm saying, because I know I don't. But here's the thing. That's your cousin, and you owe that to her as a woman and as a relative and as just as a woman in general to tell her, hey, you know what? Your man has been sending me private messages through Facebook, okay? And I'm going to tell you the story from beginning to end. That's all you have to do. If she hates you for that, then you know what? Maybe it wasn't meant for y'all to be friends or even close relatives. But she could hate you also for not saying nothing to her. Okay? And I think, like, if your man is being a dog and I see your man being a dog and you my friend or you my relative and I see your man just dogging you the fuck out, I think I owe that to you. Even if I didn't like you, I still owe that to you to let you know. Like, listen... I don't fuck with you, but I'm going to just tell you something. And that's just the type of person I am because we human beings and we women. And I feel like even if I don't like somebody, I'm still going to tell you like, yo, email you, text you, whatever, message you. Like, listen, I know you might not really care for me too much and I don't really give a fuck about you too much neither. But um, as a woman, I just want you to know. That your man is out here really hoeing. And um, I got some receipts or some proof for you. And I just want to let you know that because I wouldn't want it to be me. And I'm just trying to let you know. And that's it. If you want to talk, we can talk. But listen, let me tell you something. I guarantee you, Tasha, that you ain't the only one that he's fucking with. Because if this nigga got three kids and he's hoeing around on your cousin, and that's his girl, I promise you that he, he's fucking other bitches too. And maybe if you were to tell her that he's sending you private messages, maybe it'll open up her eyes to a whole bunch of other shit that she see, but she trying to ignore. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you know how some women, they they, they know, but they try to um to deny. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I, I think I saw him text another girl or I think, but I'm going to just deny that shit. Like, I'm going to ignore it because I don't want it to be known as a fact. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Like, or he's done it already a few times in the past. And 
she's known about it, but she just wants to try to avoid the subject. Sometimes you got to open it up, an eye opener. And sometimes it hits real close to home, especially from you being her relative. Not like some bitch on the street or some girl that's supposed to be her friend that's telling her. You are a relative to her. So maybe it might come across as a little bit different. And then, you know what? Some people might be like, you know what? You just got to leave this to yourself. However, <clears throat> let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Men, and not just men, women too, are sneaky and conniving and real deceitful and shysty and trifling, okay? And I could go on and on and on. You may... You cannot say nothing and keep that shit to yourself. And this nigga could be like, you know what? Your cousin Tasha trying to get with me and all of this shit. And that shit backfire on your motherfucking ass. And ain't none of that shit true, okay? So me personally, if it were I, I'll say something. Because first of all, you may be my cousin and I may just have met you. But just because a common courtesy and because I'm the person I am and I'm a woman too, I'm not about to let some nigga pay you and be smiling up all in your face and you got kids with this nigga. You laying up there with him raw dog fucking, raw dog fucking while he fucking other bitches. Like so he could bring something back to you, some disease and y'all got kids together or y'all got kids together. And this nigga is fucking around. Like, that's some real dog shit. Like, who does that? You're supposed to be a family man, but you out here hoeing in the streets. And then on top of that, nigga, you still trying to talk to somebody in somebody else in somebody's DM. Like, why you left me, nigga? Because you, you whack. First of all, the reason why I left you is because your sex game is whack and I really wasn't into you. And um, third of all, nigga, um, you is with my cousin. So how dare you? I don't know, ladies, like, what would you do? Would you would you say something? I know I would say something. I definitely would say something. That's just me. Like, keeping secrets is not cool. Sometimes you might have to keep a secret, but stuff like that, that can affect somebody's life to a point where, you know what, damn, I should have told her because now, look, he done gave her AIDS because he was fucking these bitches. Or, damn, I should have told her because she done caught him fucking these bitches and, he done, and she done killed him and now she in jail and she done lost her kids. It could just, it could be all kind of effects to somebody's life in general. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's a triple effect. It's just like, just like, it's just a trickling effect and you don't know how it could affect somebody's life for you not to be telling them. Okay. So me personally, I would definitely say something because here it is. He's still being disrespectful and he's DMing you. I mean, you could, and, and then you know what? What I would do is I would show, I would, I would show her and I would tell her and I would block him after that. Cause you ain't gonna want to talk to him after that. But I would, I would tell her like, why lie? Like if you a woman, be a woman and tell her just like I told that lady Bertha, like I really was not going to say nothing to her. But then I thought about it like, yo, that could be me. Fuck that. I'm gonna tell her because who the fuck is he? I don't give a fuck about how he feel, but this is a woman and it's not fair to her. That's just how I feel. You know what I'm saying? But ladies on that note, um, it's almost time for me to go get my mumsy boo. As you see, the sun has come back out and shit. Like, thanks a lot, Mother Nature, because you stay fucking up my goddamn videos. Like, seriously. She stay fucking up my videos. Um, I'm really, like, really not feeling too good. So, I guess today I will be... No, because I... I no, I got things to do. I got to dye this wig. So, I'm going to do a video of me bleaching. Or not bleaching, but dyeing this wig. So that you guys can see. Hopefully, it comes out like the last one. Um... Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, on that note, you guys, I love you guys. I hope you guys like my little Christmas tree. You know, I figured you guys would, it'll be something cute for the video, you know, something little colorful Christmas. Um, and yeah, make sure you guys check out my latest vlog and stuff and my other videos. Cause I really feel like nobody's watching my videos like that anymore. It's starting to hurt my feelings.